Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, July 25th, 2024. So here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. And as we do take a look at this, we have nothing to speak of in the Atlantic Basin right now, nice and quiet. And that is because we have a lot of dry, dusty Saharan air moving over the main development region. That's these nimbostratus clouds that we have occurring right now. But if we look off towards the east, just off of Africa, we have a fairly strong, robust tropical wave wave with a lot of deep convection. We have a lot of convergence, but the thing that's going to prevent this from developing in the short term will be the Saharan dust and some wind shear that it's going to deal with. But once this tropical wave right over here moves into the Western Atlantic, into the Caribbean, into the Bahamas, as well as Cuba, the Dominican Republic, including for Jamaica and Puerto Rico, we could have a tropical depression or tropical storm development possible according to our latest European ensemble and its deterministic forecast. There's also some evidence to back that up that we will discuss in today's video. So taking a look at the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, they are still not expecting anything to develop in the next seven days. So good news, take this time to prepare for the meat of the hurricane season. Once we go into mid August, late August, early, mid, late September, it's going to be a track race, I'm afraid. May not be that way, but you just don't know. A lot of signals out there suggesting that is a possibility. When we take a look at the East Pacific, there is Tropical Storm Bud. You're not my buddy, but it's Tropical Storm Bud with 60 mile an hour winds. This is going to be moving in this general direction, off towards the west and then the southwest. Not bothering anybody, which is good because we don't need that in the Eastern Pacific. Now there is still quite a bit of disagreement amongst the deterministic model runs as of today. They've been this way for a few days already where the European model still continues to indicate that there's a weak signal of tropical development in this area of the Atlantic, in the Caribbean, in the Eastern Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas, whereas the GFS model continues to not indicate any tropical development at all. Today still holds the same thing, and I'll show you that here on the European model. So here's a look at the forecast model. This is a three plot system. The color shading is vorticity. The lines are thicknesses at 5,000 feet above the surface. So it's basically high contours, and then the wind speed and direction are your wind barbs, those little flagged lines that you see there indicating our wind direction. So as we go over the next 24 hours, thankfully we were able to retrieve the complete run of the European model, not the uh, cartoon model as what I would call it from yesterday where it has 24 hour increments. So it gives us a more high resolution picture of the state of the atmosphere. And this is the tropical wave that we are monitoring. It's pretty broad in nature. This is not one of those very compact nature systems where they take quite a bit of time or where they don't take a lot of time at all to spin up. They can spin up very quickly. In this case, this is very broad. And so this is not in no hurry to get organized at all, but the environment that it transverses in might allow that to happen fairly quickly once it gets into the Western main development region in this portion of the Atlantic. So as we go forward here in the next uh, 48 hours, we can see here that um, still nothing to be concerned about. Here's that mess of a tropical wave that still is kind of in place there, moving really slowly. This ridge of high pressure to the north gets squashed a little bit because, well, the pattern does not allow a more robust ridge. The Saharan dust really abates. The moisture content in the atmosphere begins to accumulate. And that's why this wave might end up doing something that we don't typically expect it to do. So by day five, this is for Tuesday morning, July the 30th, here's that ridge of high pressure, fairly strong, but also pretty short. It's not very large of a beast of a ridge like we are seeing right now. This is more contained more towards the Western Atlantic. And to the south of this periphery of the, the surface high, we have a tropical wave that is now emerging off of Africa. It's gonna be over here in the next five days. 
And while this system does not look like it's going to do a whole lot, the background state of the atmosphere, the MJO, the Madden Julian oscillation, also a convective coupled Kelvin wave will transverse the region and give this a little bit of a spark. In, in other words, give it some gasoline to get better organized. And as we go into day seven, this is for Thursday, August the 1st, the first day of August, we do have a consolidation here of a more compact system, not as broad in nature, so it, it contracts a little bit. And we almost have a closed surface flow here, but the wind barbs here do not indicate that this would be a bona fide tropical depression or storm. And then by about, say, day eight, and day nine or so, I, actually this is day eight, my bad, we have a more stronger system. And if we actually zoom in and kind of close in on this, we can see that this is indeed a closed surface low because we have one isobar. So we can see winds curling around here. So this is either a very sharp wave envelope or, or a wave axis that could in theoretically develop in a closed surface low because the wave axis is like is in this configuration. Usually when you have a wave axis like this, it, things spin up versus if you have a wave axis that kind of does this, it's not able to spin up as quickly, surprisingly. And so in this case, we have a more of a negatively tilted uh, wave envelope that develops. And so by the end of the model run here, by about Sunday, this glides up the southwestern Atlantic coast here of Florida over the Bahamas. This would be a, a pretty concerning situation because this does intensify as it moves northwestward along the coast of Florida. So anyone still living along the coast of Florida here over the Bahamas and still not letting your guards down here in the, the Dominican Republic in as well as if you're in Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico, as well as say Cuba, I would still not cancel this system uh, moving into your area. For an example, if we look at the 0Z run from yesterday, this wave envelope was actually moving over the Northern Caribbean Sea, over the Dominican Republic, as well as Cuba. In today's uh, 12Z model run, it's a lot further north, more similar to our yesterday's 12Z run, only yesterday's run was very bullish uh, at actually indicating that this would be a tropical storm at some intensity in today's run we have maybe a tropical depression or maybe a storm at the very end of the model run so there is still a signal here from the european model still indicating to me that there is still some potential that this wave does develop into a named storm or a depression so the gfs model has a more different scenario a, a scenario that has been pretty consistent amongst the other global models like the canadian which i won't show in this video but if we uh, fast forward this we can see again this ridge is in place here over the atlantic what we call the azores high actually i'm going ahead of myself sorry um, so this is wednesday morning july 31st and then august 1st august 2nd we still do not see any development here. And this is a 10 day forecast, a great example that we cannot rely on one model in itself because the GFS really is showing a very different pattern here, completely 180 flip. Ridge here to the north that is pretty strong, strong trade winds, probably more Saharan dust outbreaks for early August versus if we look at the European model and we zoom back out, we can see the ridge is a little weaker and it's, you know, it's a little weaker and it's not quite as big and extensive, which allows this wave to develop. And we have more tropical waves coming off of Africa that could provide more additional development. So very different signal on the Euro versus the GFS that has virtually nothing. And if we just kind of look at the Canadian, also a different scenario. So high here on the Canadian, the GFS had a high more like this and the European has a high more kind of like this. So very different scenarios on all three of these models. So now what are the chances of a tropical depression forming over the next 10 days over this region of the Atlantic? Well, right now on today's ensemble output, this is a ensemble looking at the probabilistic forecast or probabilistic However you want to say it, tongue twister for me, 
we have a 10 to 30 percent chance of a tropical depression forming here that's down from 50 percent yesterday this is not always good news because this has been fluctuating. Last night, it only had a 10% chance of tropical depression formation. And tonight, today's output, there's a 30% chance again. So we will definitely continue to monitor this as this gets closer. And again, additional tropical development chances are possible beyond that for the central and eastern Atlantic Basin. Another way we could visualize this is the ensemble member uh, forecast here. These are different members, so we could see uh, members doing this, some members doing this, and we have a cluster here that is more diverged and a weaker signal than yesterday. And what I mean by that, we have a lot of dark blue colors, not as much green colors or even uh, yellow colors, which otherwise indicate stronger winds on that member. So some good news today, the members, while there's a lot of them, do not indicate a strong tropical storm, which is good news for areas like Florida. But still, there is a disturbance here that is involved. And if that disturbance is weak, medium, or strong, it could bring different impacts. Anything maybe from just a few showers, maybe enhanced showers and thunderstorms, to a pretty significant heavy rain event and flood concerns along the coast here of Florida, especially over uh, eastern Florida. That is along the coast of, say, Fort Lauderdale. If you're on um, Delray Beach over here, definitely need to be monitoring this. If you're also in the Caribbean, don't take your eyes off of this as this is still, there's still a signal here from the Euro that still indicates there is at least some slight signals that there could be a de depression or two that forms in early August. So now you might be asking, why is the European model indicating continuously that there could be tropical depression or a tropical like development in the Western Atlantic, Southwestern Atlantic over the next 10 days? Well, if we take a look at our CHI, this is the convective helicity index at 200 millibars. So this is in the upper troposphere, and this is a very important layer that we look at for these kind of maps. And the green colors here indicate there is upward motion, uh, enhanced thunderstorms, lower pressure, converging winds at the equator. So that brings an, a lot more moisture, more convection, right? And we can get tropical depressions or storms off of that. These waves that you get riled up in this, get tangled up, could actually develop into waves and into depressions. So when we take a look at the Atlantic here, again, just like our Mercator projection that I will soon show you here, anything over here is pretty much the Atlantic. So I hope you all can see that this box I'm going to make a thicker box so you all can see this. So anything here is the Atlantic side. And when we take a look here at the forecast, right now we're not in a favorable environment. In fact, we have a lot of sinking air that is expected to develop in the short term over the Atlantic, which is why this wave in the first place is not going to do so well. But once we go further into, like, say, early August and even into mid-August, there's a more favorable MJO signal showing up here on the, on the CFS, the GFS, and the Euro combined making this. And here's a look at that. So a very enhanced phase of the MJO going to be propagating into the Atlantic here by the first week of August, perhaps in middle of August, we could see more, even more favorable conditions. That combined with a very high amplitude ER pattern that is expected to develop, perhaps a very active convective couple wave pattern or a Rosby wave breakout event over Africa could really stir things up in a hurry, especially if any waves come off of Africa, they could be much stronger, more beneficial or more conducive for tropical development here. And we can see lower than normal pressures here circled over Africa, which really indicate to me that Rosby wave break off, an ER event, as well as an MJO event could really favor this area pretty significantly once we go into August, mid-August, late August. There's more than just to that forecast. Here's a look at the ECMWF ensemble forecast. This is the control member, by the way, and we can see very similar to with what we were pointing out, very favorable MJO, a lot of convection going on over Africa. This upward motion really exacerbates that. And all the sinking motion here is going to be over the central and western Pacific over basically by early to mid-August. And once this again gets 
into the Western Pacific or Eastern Pacific, that is, with a very active um, co convective coupled Kelvin wave, I am very confident we're going to have a lot of development. Now, that's if the Pacific will actually give some of the convection towards the Atlantic, which there is still some uncertainties in that. Here's one of those uncertainties when we take a look here at the GEFS version 12 model. This is a different uh, global computer model that we look at. We can see a lot of upward motion here all the way through most of August in the central or in the central and eastern Pacific versus the Atlantic. We do have an opportunity as well. So it could be a possibility here that two basins are fairly active. We have the East Pacific and the Atlantic that could be very active once we go into mid to late August. Well, first of all, early August for the uh, East Pacific and then the rest of August for the Atlantic. So definitely some opportunity here to really make up for what has been a relatively quiet July other than barrel that we had in early July. One other map that I wanted to show you all really quickly here is on a Mercator projection, a more wider image to kind of um, visualize with exactly what we were looking at. So here's the Atlantic again. Here is Africa right over here. Here is the United States. There's Hawaii. Central America is over here. And we can see that um, this is for August the 9th, August the 8th through August the 13th. Look at all this upward motion. So again, very conducive environment here, especially over here, over the Caribbean and over the Gulf of Mexico. We gotta understand just because we have a lot of upward motion here does not mean we are gonna see tropical development. The most favorable region actually is right in the transition point. Right over here is when we see the most favorable conditions. So this would probably be again the first week of August sometime. Then as we transition into say the middle to the end of August, once the MJO gets well into Africa, we get these tropical waves that still move off of Africa. And while there is sinking air here, again, there's a delay to this a little bit, and we will still see a lot of tropical development spawn in the main development region in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And as we talked about a couple of videos ago, upper ocean heat content is very high for this time of the year, especially in the main development region of the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. So if we get any tropical waves that move off of Africa, they move into this environment, this could be a really big problem for um, residents, for communities downstream, we could be talking about um, a lot of impacts, especially in August and September, once the meat of the season really gets going. Now, just to review with what we talked about right now, the main development region of the Atlantic is looking nice and quiet. So make sure you take the time right now to make sure you get prepared for the meat of the Atlantic hurricane season. We know it's coming folks, mid, early, late August, somewhere around there. We know probably by mid August, it's gonna be very active. By really September, it's green light means go. It's gonna be very active. And I'm really, really concerned that some of you may not be prepared yet for how busy this season could get. So make sure you take the time now you have your generator, make sure it's good in good working order. You have plenty of batteries, water, that sort of thing. So when it, if a system impacts your area, you could already be prepared. But otherwise, if you did enjoy today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, July 25th, 2024, make sure you hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already. You guys have been doing good at supporting the YouTube channel, hitting the like button, sharing this video with their family and friends on social media, and also never forget to hit the bell notification icon because once we do get a tropical storm or hurricane making landfall somewhere in the United States within about 18 to 24 hours, we will be going live on, this, on these systems. Not only that, we will also be doing live discussions if necessary when these systems become a threat to any population. But anyways, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.